Hello, welcome to Young Life episode two. My name is Louis, and today I'm gonna to be talking about my experience in moving to India as a foreigner. Um, I moved to India when I was 13 years old. I lived there for three years, and it was a wild experience. Before then, I never even uh, visited a third world country, so I definitely uh, got a lot of insight moving over there. Um, before I really get into the details of this video, I just wanna say, this is definitely a video you want to watch if you are planning to move to India from a kind of Western country where you haven't experienced those third world things. And it's definitely different visiting India than it is to live there. Um, you definitely get a deeper insight into the country. Um, this is also an interesting video just to watch to see what it's like to live in a country like India because there's not many countries like it. Um, so I lived in India for three years. Um, I started my eighth grade year there and I left right after my 10th grade year. Uh, when I first visited India, before we moved there, you really get the, the basic insight, what everyone kind of sees in India f from the outside. You kind of see there's a lot of poverty. Um, it, it's very disorganized, India, in, in terms of a lot of things. The, the government, the roads, um, the way things are run in terms of businesses, in terms of even sticking to a line. They don't do lines there. You just go as close to the counter as you can and you keep cutting each other. Um, but I think those are things that people already know. You know India's um, a very polluted country and you know there's a lot of poverty there due to the bigger population. Now, I think I, I wanted to format this video in a way where um, I'm going to start off with the pros and then get into um, the cons as well. For me personally, because it was in my younger years, I do think that um, kind of the negative things did stick with me because if, if you're planning to move there um, with kids, it's definitely putting a pause on your kid's life. It does um, set them back in a lot of things compared to when you're growing up in England and when you're growing up in um, America, at least, because of the two places that I know um, or I have experience in kind of growing up in. Now, let's just get the pros out the way because the pros are just short and sweet, whereas I can kind of go deeper into the cons. Um, so with India, a lot of reasons why people want to live there is because of how cheap it is. And you see this with other third world countries like Thailand and other countries in Asia. Um, it's so cheap there. You can afford the labor. You can afford to go out and eat. Uh, housing accommodation is very cheap there. You know, you can get a five star hotel for like 100 bucks where here in the States, it can be thousands. Um, the food is really good because, again, the countries in Asia um, kind of, it's not like America where the whole continent is just three different countries. Um, there's so many countries on the continent of Asia and it's so easy for it to spread everywhere because it's on the same land. And so they have great um, Japanese food, great Chinese food. Um, and then they have hotels like the Sheraton Westin um, where they have like American cuisine and Western cuisine. Now, it's also really cheap to eat at these hotels. Everything there is cheap. You don't really see many places where it compares to American prices. On top of uh, the food being cheap, you can also afford to have people work for you uh, directly. So you can't really drive as a foreigner in India. So you have to hire drivers because there is not really a law on the road. You're just interwining I've heard it's a lot like South America, but when I went to Dominican Republic, I can definitely tell you India has worse driving in terms of chaotic or chaos compared to the Dominican. Now, another really thing, great thing that's cool about uh, living in a third world country um, when it comes to saving money is, again, because you're in Asia, you're close to a lot of uh, countries and flights are cheaper. So while I was over there, I got to visit Dubai, I got to visit Australia, I got to visit Singapore, and if I was there for longer, um, we definitely would have went to other places, but also visiting India itself. It's a really beautiful country. You can go visit the Taj Mahal. You can go to Rajasthan and see all the um, routes up there and the, the scenery. It's meant to be really pretty there. Um, Goa, you have the beaches, and it's so cheap. I went to Goa. Um, you have Bangalore as well. There's a lot of cool places in India to go see. And like I said, I think India is a great place to go visit if you haven't. The culture there is really nice. The people are really nice, and I think that's something you have to preface as well. Um, although there is a kind of 
um, power dynamic that goes on between Indians and uh, foreigners, uh, specifically I would say white foreigners. Um, that, that does come into play a bit with the cons as well, but it's kind of like how American society views celebrities, Indian society views um, white foreigners in that they kind of put you on a pedestal. You know, um, my mom's a lot paler than I am. They would, they would ask her for pictures. They would always try to strike conversation. They're very nice people. Um, now, another thing that's when it comes to um, service and hiring people is uh, you also can afford to get maids and their wages are $100, $200 a month. So compared to here where you get someone to clean your house and it costs $300 for four hours of work, that's definitely something that um, you can kind of relax and have more time to yourself when you aren't working. Now onto the cons. And like I said, I, I lived in India while I was a child, so I did miss out on a lot of things and I'll tell you why. Um, first things, as a kid, right, um, your, one of your main objectives is to kind of socialize and network yourself and find out who you are and find out what kind of people you get along with. And the problem that I found with India was that there, because of the language barrier and because of the power dynamic where they put you on this pedestal and you can't really, well, not all of them. I want to preface that. I want to say a lot of, um, a lot of people that are from India, they, they do just put you on that pedestal and it's kind of hard to connect with them when there is that dynamic there, as well as the language barrier. You can't just go out and find um, people to talk to. On top of that, you do have to go to private schools because government schools don't um, teach in English. And so I lived in Hyderabad, the school I went to, ISH, only had 350 kids. And that is basically, and that's from kindergarten to 12th grade. So th there isn't much um, variety to mingle with. The whole high school was like 80 people. Um, so you either get along, you don't, and those are the people you're stuck with for, um, you know, those four years. You can't go out like in the U.S. and go um, join clubs. The majority of them either won't speak English or um, are focused on something else. Like there's, there's sports things you can do, but again, not a lot of them speak English. Um, you can't really go to um, like drive-in theaters or something like that where you can kind of mingle with the other kids. Um, you kind of stop maturing when you live in India because of the lack of socialization that you get. You can't work over there as a foreigner. You can't drive over there as a foreigner. Even if you're an adult, you can't drive. I hope you know that. So um, it gets on a pause. And then when you return back to life, you kind of have to relearn those things. I do think that as a kid, it's important to work because it kind of builds up your independent life. You know, you stop relying on your parents. You also have time away from your parents in a place where you can talk when you want. When you're in school, you can't really, you know, talk whenever you want. You have to listen. They tell you to be quiet. So you really do get that independence from getting your first job and finding out who you are. And that's something you can't do. Um, and so um, another thing that um, put me off of the country in terms of to live in is that it's a very slow paced country. So we, we moved into our home um, in January of 2017, I believe it was, or, or just around there. And it took, so we move in and there is no, there's buildings around us like scaffolding, but even after the, the two and a half years before we left, those buildings were still scaffolding. Um, when you go to, um, when you go to renew your passports or your visas, those things take hours and hours and it's guaranteed. So many power outages. The Wi-Fi is always going out. Um, things have not been modernized yet to where they're consistent and, and they, they, they work. And so if you're planning to go to India, I would definitely say go on a look and see first. From my look and see, I knew from the start that... Um, I wasn't going to be the happiest there. I knew it didn't really fit what I wanted as a kid. But something good is you can really go there for a few years. You can save your money, come back, and definitely um, make your way up the tax bracket if that's what you're there for. I think that's what most people would go there for, unless they have family over there. Um, 
but but definitely think about it. It's a it's a big change, and if you have kids, you have to think for them as well. When I came back to the U.S. after being over there, um, I couldn't. I don't. I didn't have the same knowledge, basic knowledge that um, kids from America had. I didn't know how the honor system worked in school. I didn't know you could pick your own classes. It's completely different, and so you kind of have to learn that when you come back. Um, but something I, I would I would say that's good about bringing your kids over there. The curriculum that I experienced in India was so much harder than it is here in the States. And because of that, I was kind of struggling over there. But when I came back to the States, I was a straight A student. Um, so it does set you ahead academically. They are definitely some really good schools um, all around India. There is um, this organi a sports organization called ISACI, where it links all the, or not all of them, but a lot of the um, international schools in, in uh, India and we would all compete um, and go to each other's schools for different sports. So I think that is something cool. Um, you can experience a better curriculum. Uh, I hope this helped you guys out. If you have any questions, be sure to comment down below. And uh, next uh, topic I'd like to talk about um, is my experience um, being a garbage man. So if you're interested in that, make sure to comment down below. If not, I'll see if I can think of a different topic.